friends, welcome to the beginning of a new weekly vlog. I am kicking things off on a Tuesday, as always, but I'm feeling all kinds of confident in this week's TBR because I only have three books left on the wheel TBR for this month. We have The Saviour's Champion by Jenna Moresi, High Fidelity by Nick Hornby and Oryx and Crate by Margaret Atwood and I've already started this one, I'm like 30 pages in. However, if you saw last week's vlog, you'll know that I ha didn't finish but I did start My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So I have about 50 pages of this left. So that's the TBR for hopefully I'll manage to finish all of these out this week and then I'll do it like super early. I'll read all the books on my wheel super early. That would be awesome. <laughs> because I don't know if I've mentioned, but I'm going to Italy <laughs> for nine days at the beginning of June. So I would like to uh, pre-film my Wheel of TBR video. I don't usually do that. To be fair, I don't usually finish all of the books until like the last day, even if I do actually manage it. So feeling confident, let's do this. Also, I just had a delivery and guys, I finally took the plunge. <laughs> I got my first bullet journal. I know, I'm like one of the last people on booktube to actually <laughs> start a bullet journal. But I have been looking at the classes on Skillshare and it has me like so inspired and motivated to actually try because I've wanted to do it for so long but I've, I don't know, I've been kind of intimidated by them. I felt that I might get a little bit overwhelmed of trying to, you know, figure out how I'm going to put this together. Um, so once again, I am very happy to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So thanks again Skillshare for wanting to sponsor another one of my videos. If you didn't already know, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of courses from design, business, technology. Honestly, there's so much on there I'm still exploring. The classes are all taught by professionals working in the field. And as I mentioned, <laughs> I've been looking at the bullet journal classes just to see what it was all about and I really really like them. I've been loving the classes by Jessica Awinyo. She has one called Bullet Journaling Your Way, a tailored to you planner beginner's setup. And that one is perfect for me because like I said, I get overwhelmed when I think about how I'm gonna start doing these layouts, what I'm gonna track, how I'm gonna track. She made it seem so much more simple. Her classes basically have motivated me to actually try. Um, she also has classes on there on hand lettering, so I will try that this week too and see if I'm any good at that. I think it just takes practice, but they're just so insightful, I guess, and it's just taken a lot of the stress away from figuring out what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of copy the way that she suggests that you start off with and I can change things up over time. So if you'd like to check Skillshare out for yourself and perhaps maybe look at the bullet journal classes that I just mentioned that I found super helpful, you can get a premium membership which will give you unlimited access to everything available on the platform. It's under $10 a month and that's on an annual subscription basis. However, if you wanna try it for free first, I have a two month free trial for you guys. The link is in the description. It's for the first 500 people. Um, so if you want to learn something new, explore, maybe brush up on some skills you already have, I would suggest checking them out. So the link will be in the description for you. So I'm gonna bring you along on this journey. I'm gonna show you what I have kind of planned for it. I know it's a bit of an odd time to be starting a bullet journal, like three weeks into the month, but I'm gonna have a kind of crazy couple of weeks just trying to get everything organized, get everything sorted in terms of booktube as well. Like I have some videos that need to go up before I go to Italy. And then I probably will start the spreads as well for like June. Uh, obviously I'm gonna be using it mostly to track my reading, um, but there's other things I wanna track as well. So yeah, I'm excited to actually give this a try. As I said, I've been looking at the classes on Skillshare and I wanna try the hand lettering. <laughs> I don't know how pretty it's going to be to begin with, but you know, you have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> and I always enjoy looking at how other people organise these. I mean, I always find it really intimidating. Um, but yeah, so that's something I'm going to be doing this week. Also, hopefully going to be, like I said, reading these. Like I said, I have the last 50 pages of this, so I'll finish this one out today. And then I'm going to start with Oryx and Craig after that, because I have read 30 pages and Oh, it was so good. This one's like basically a dystopian. We're following a guy who's known as the snowman and he's kind of all, all alone. Well, there's some children there. He keeps alluding to friends that are like not there anymore, Oryx and Craig. And we kind of skip back a lot to his past. So we see what went wrong with the world. There's some mysteries to do with his parents because they're kind of like scientists. I think it's kind of a thing of like plague or disease that has wiped out most people. I don't know, I'm just guessing. I'm 30 pages in. <laughs> And then I cannot wait 
to read this one. I think I've left it off until the end of the month because I'm that excited about it and I just wanted something to look forward to. But this is Savior's Champion by Jenna Moresi. Jenna Moresi is also a YouTuber, but I've not checked out her channel yet. I need to. This was kind of sent to me by Bobby. <laughs> Bobby reads too much. Love her the most. Check her out. Link in description. Go show her some, some support. Uh, this was her favourite book of last year, so that's why she wanted to send it to me. I think I'm going to love it too. It's like adult fantasy. It's supposed to be gritty. It's kind of like a competition with all these men fighting to the death to win the hand of this powerful woman who is magical. <laughs> Our main character Tobias um, isn't really interested in her though. I think he's in it for like the money uh, because he's got like his own kind of family situation. I think someone's ill. I don't know. I've not started it yet but I'm so excited to try it. And then we have High Fidelity which actually was one of my second chance books. I pulled this out of the TBR teapot though. Uh, mixed bag of responses for this one. Some people have told me it doesn't really age very well in terms of feminism and stuff um, but it is supposed to be quite humorous. It's about a guy who works in a record shop so there's loads of like musical references and I think there's a romance in here too. That's all I really know about it but it is quite small and I've heard good things about Nick Hornby. I've never tried his books before so excited for this one as well. So that's the plan for today. Right now I'm doing some editing but later on I will finish this out and I will start this one. It should be a good week. I don't know if I have got any plans or anything um, but you know I've got like videos to film, books to finish, that kind of deal, this to play with so it should be good. So anyway, I'll catch you later on, probably tomorrow, when I've actually read some stuff. Hello, hello, hello! Okay, apparently I'm RuPaul now. Uh, yeah, the library is open because reading is what? Fundamental. Anyway, it's Thursday, my dudes, and this is Bellatrix's tale because I start vlogging, she arrives. Oh, she's leaving. She'll be back. Anyway, I've not read that much in the last couple of days, but I thought I'd best give you an update because I finished this book and it was so good. I knew I'd love it, but the ending definitely like clinched it for me. This was so, so good, as I just said. <laughs> I'm repeating myself. Uh, but yeah, the 80s references in this were just on point. Yes, I'm a child of the 90s, so I didn't get all of them. Some of them went over my head, but like the music references and everything was just was so well done. This felt like a John Hughes movie mixed in with The Exorcist. Like if Molly Ringwald was possessed, that would be this book. I absolutely adored the female friendship in this book. I want to see this become a movie. This would be a great movie. It had one of those bittersweet endings that I personally really like. And as well as being oh so creepy, it was just so humorous in parts as well, especially the exorcist scenes. Like, well, no, sorry, the exorcism <laughs> scenes. Oh, I don't want to spoil you and tell you all the things I loved about it because they would be spoilers, but I highly recommend y'all. It's not too much of horror, like, if you're not really a horror fan, I still suggest it because it is YA and you know it mostly talks about this friendship between these two characters. And there is a lot of teenage drama and it did take me a while to get into it. Like not a lot of stuff happens, I'd say until like two thirds of the way in. But nonetheless, stick with it. So good. I understand the hype with this now. I remember for my, well for our Bingo-a-thon bingo live show on Ola's channel, um, Natasha and Ola both were telling me that I needed to finish this book like because they both loved it and of course if they if they love something I know I'm gonna love it. I actually picked this up because of Natasha as well but yes love this love this so much. Five stars an easy one five stars. So that's all I've read I haven't picked this back up I think I mentioned at the beginning of this week's vlog that I am 30 pages into this desperate to carry on with it. I don't know why I haven't picked up a book like yesterday or today yet. I don't know. I hope to read more of this tonight. Uh, today I've been locked in the house all afternoon. Well not locked in, that's dramatic. <laughs> I've been stuck in the house because our oven broke a few days ago. Well actually last week. Um, the fan would work but there was like no heat so we've been living on like stir fries, fajitas, pasta for <laughs> last week getting really bored. So a bloke came round today but it wasn't like a fixed time, you know, it could be any time between like noon and 6pm. So I didn't want to start this vlog or like film video or anything today even though I had some time because I thought, you know, I'd get interrupted, I didn't know how long he'd be here, I didn't know how noisy it would be. Turns out it was only here for 10 minutes and it's sorted now so that's good. Yeah I know this is thrilling, absolutely thrilling content, my life is just so wild. <laughs> but I finally uploaded my bingo fun vlog. <laughs> 
Yay! I'm hoping to read a lot of this tonight. It is quite fast paced and it's really, really intriguing. Um, I think I told you already what this is about. I vlogged a couple of days ago and I, t I think I told you, but you know, my fellow vloggers out there, do you forget what you've said in your previous clips? Because I always do that. I always end up repeating myself. And then when I'm editing, I'm like, bitch, just shut up. You've already said this. Yup. And again, this was meant to be like a short update because I didn't really have much to talk to you about. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and let you know what I read tomorrow. Hopefully I'll read some more of this. I have attempted to listen to some more of Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin because as you know, listening to the audiobook for that. But I'm still salty about the season ending and every time I try and listen to it, I'm just get like so filled with like rage and frustration. I'm way too invested in this fictional story. I think you guys will understand <laughs> where I'm coming from with this, getting too attached. Um, so yeah, I might listen to some more of that as well, but I'm not too worried about it. It's fine. I will just try and prioritize this and then I've got the Savior's Champion and High Fidelity and that's all of them, which is amazing because I could really do with pre-filming my Wheel of TBR. I always end up filming it on like the last day of the month or the first day of the month because I never get all these bloody books read. But I'm going to Italy, aren't I, um, in June, so, and we're going on the second, so it's gonna be a bit mad. So I'd rather get that done sooner than rather than later. So I need to get my ass into gear, basically. I need to read. So yeah, I just continue to blabber on, don't I, and just word vomit at you. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go respond to comments from you lovely people, and then I'm gonna read this. <laughs> Hey y'all, happy Friday. I'm vlogging from my kitchen because there's some um, mowing of lawns happening right outside my flat. It's been happening for hours and it's so noisy. But anyway, I have some time this afternoon. It's around 2 p.m. And I thought I'd better give you an update because I've read some more of this. I'm at page 178 and we're getting more answers now. I'm still full of confusion. I think I told you what this was about. We're following a guy, he's called the Snow, well, he goes by the Snowman, but when he was younger, he went by Jimmy. He's reflecting back on some of his childhood stuff that happened because this is a dystopian. So there's only, it only seems to be that there's him left in the world, but we have these children of Crake and he keeps referencing these two friends that he had, Oryx and Crake, that we now kind of assume are gone or he alludes to them being gone. So we're finding out some more information about Oryx and Crake now, which is nice. So he's kind of looking back at how he became friends with them and stuff. And we find out more about these children. Everything is genetically altered. Like it seems to be a case of the world went tits up because there was disease and they kept genetically altering species. A lot of things went extinct. I don't know what the time frame for this is though. Like I don't know how much further in the future this is. The snowman's a really odd character. He's constantly talking to himself while he's talking to Oryx and Crake in his own brain. And the flashbacks are getting a bit much. Like, I think I have a strong stomach when it comes to reading about like grim stuff. Like I knew this was gonna be grim. But there's some stuff about like the sex trafficking of young girls, well, just children in general. And, like pedophilia, sexual abuse, it's like really getting to me. Um, I think I'm past that part now. <laughs> It is a lot, and then there's also kind of flashbacks to him being a teenager with his friend Craig, and they're looking at all this dodgy ass stuff on the internet. The internet is wild at this time. I mean, it is now, but like this makes it seem like there's so much more that's accessible to them that's like really, really fucked up. Like this is probably what you'd expect to see on the, what's the name for it? The dark web. And being in his brain as he's a teenager, I don't like a thing. I don't like reading books from perspectives of teenage boys. I think teenage boys are the worst. Like everything comes back to sex. Like every woman that's introduced, he talks about the size of her breasts, that kind of thing. But the writing is good. I am intrigued. I'm also incredibly confused as I mentioned, but I really like the, how everything has changed and there's all these like new species of animals that have been put together. Like those wolf dog hybrids, uh, bobcats hybrids these new types of pigs and like raccoon skunk hybrids. It's, it's cool. And also, like I said, we're getting more about these children, these children of Crake and finding out a bit more about them. So yeah, I don't wanna give too much away. There's a lot that's happening right now. And I'm not even halfway through. I did just wanna mention that this isn't gonna be for everybody. It is really, really grim. There's a lot of stuff in here, as I mentioned, there's like sex trafficking, sexual abuse 
violence, uh, that kind of thing. Also, whilst I'm on that topic, I forgot to mention with this one, because I finished this yesterday, didn't I, and ra like, raved about it and told you, like, you should read it. I will like to say that there is some abuse against animals in this one, just like most horror movies. If there's a pet, you know things aren't gonna happen, go, go well for that pet, right? Which I get really bored of, don't you think? <laughs> like, I swear, every horror movie, every horror book, there's a dog, nothing goes well for that dog. I get bored of that. I feel like that doesn't always need to be included. I guess they're just trying to get you like emotionally attached to this animal and then kind of destroy you. Um, so that was dramatic, but you know what I mean. So just be aware of that. If you want to read this one, this one's so much more lighthearted than this one though. But right now, as I said, it's 2 p.m. Um, it looks like it's going to be a lovely day. So I'm going to go out to my local charity shops. I've been stuck in the house for a few days, thinking it was a good idea to get myself out of the house. So I'm going to go to a coffee shop, going to go look around and see what I can find. You know the deal. I always go to the same place, don't I? Because it's so good. And I'm hoping I'll get to read some more of this. And then when I come back, I actually got a delivery this morning of the pens I was waiting for for my bullet journal. I didn't want to start my bullet journal until I got the pens because I'm impatient and I just want to do it all in one go. I got some cheap ones from Amazon. I don't want to invest in really expensive like equipment and stuff just yet until I see how I get on with it and see if it's something that I want to continue with. I think it will be, like I'm, I need to be more organized. I'm always creating to-do lists, but it'd be nice just to have everything in one place. So when I get home, I'm gonna plan out my bullet journals. That should be fun. <laughs> lay out everything that I want to lay out in my bullet journal. So yeah, that's the plan for today. I'm gonna go out for a bit, come back, do a bullet journal. I'll probably watch RuPaul whilst doing that. I would like to say I'm going to listen to an audiobook whilst I'm out, but I'm probably not. I'm probably just gonna listen to Lizzo because it feels like that kind of day. <laughs> so yeah, I will hopefully read some more, hopefully have some new books to share with you. Well, secondhand books, see what I can find. Do my bullet journal, all that kind of stuff, so I'll catch you in a bit. <laughs> I'm now back. It's been a few hours actually. I was out for quite a while. I didn't end up going to a coffee shop just because it was so warm today. Like I didn't expect it to be that warm and I was like basically melting. It just wasn't a Costa cup of tea toasty kind of vibe, you know? Plus it was really busy in there so I didn't actually read like any of this. But hold on to your wigs kids because this could possibly be the best charity shop, second bag, second hand bookstore, thrift books, whatever you want to call it, haul I've ever done. Not in terms of the amount of books I found, but the, like, I just need to show you. Like I said, hang on to your wigs, they're about to fly. So this first one, I pretty much freaked out when I saw it there, because I just, I never expected to find one of these second hand. Y'all. 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 Okay, so I found the Barnes and Noble classic edition of Alice's Avengers in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Like, we don't have Barnes and Noble over here, and I love all their classic editions. Obviously, I've seen a lot of bookshelf tours, a lot of U um, US booktubers hauling these, and I've always wanted them. Um, but this this was three pounds. This was three pounds, and it was it was in like the children's bit of one of the charity shops I went to, and I just about lost my shit. <laughs> I couldn't not get this. Look at these golden edges. Guys, what even is, what? <laughs> I've had this on my Amazon wish list for so long, but it's 20 pounds on there. So I basically saved myself 17 pounds by finding this one secondhand. Just further proof that my local charity shops, and like, they're the bomb, right? They are, mm. I can't pull that off. I won't do that again. But yeah, that was the first one I found. And secondly, I found this next one in the first shop I went to and I didn't need it. Well, I didn't need that one either. But <laughs> I found a cloth bound classic edition of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which is my favorite classic. You'll probably know. And like, Oh, I've just recently done my bookshelf tour and I mentioned that I wanted to get more of these because I have two already. I have Sense of Sensibility and I have Persuasion. Persuasion I also found in my secondhand bookstores. Uh, so yeah, I um, I got this one too. Again, this it also was £3. So for £6, like I couldn't go wrong really. I already own beautiful copies of both of these so I didn't need a second copy obviously. But when they're this pretty 
and this good value for money, I couldn't help myself. You know I have a weakness for pretty books. I'll show you the other two editions that I have. Um, just just cause in case you haven't seen my bookshelf tour. So I already have the Waterstone um, leather bound classic editions of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Jane Eyre. These two are my favourite classics though, hands down. I'm kind of slightly obsessed with Alice in Wonderland if you couldn't tell from like my Alice in Wonderland teapot <laughs> and stuff. Well I have actually two Alice in Wonderland teapots. Um, so I already had have these beautiful editions. I've actually read both of these editions. Well I read them in these editions. But now I have two editions of these. I love how they match with the leaves as well. Like I'm gonna have to put them next to each other on my shelves aren't I? And now I have two copies of Alice in Wonderland. Actually, have free. I have a um, normal kind of penguin classic edition. Um, it's not as beautiful as these. <laughs> and both of these include the original illustrations as well. Oh, I want to show you the end pages for this one. And this one also has the uh, illustrations in it too. I just can't believe that I found these two, honestly. And then I only got one more. I could have gone and got loads more, but <laughs> tried to keep it together because technically I already own these like I didn't need them <laughs> whatever they're pretty I had to um so the other one I found is I found Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli um I only bought this because I know it's Lala from Books and Lala's favorite book and it was pound so I figured hey let's try it it's supposed to be absolutely adorable I think it's about a young girl who's new at school and she's got her own sense of style I don't know she's a little bit different to the rest of the kids uh, that's basically all I know about it I just know that Lala loves it and I you know a lot of the books that she loves I love too so yeah not bad for my little haul <laughs> honestly I'm still pinching myself that I found these two so a very successful trip <laughs> when it comes to the books I found but like I said I didn't read any more of this so I will do I'll pick this up later tonight uh, but like I said um, when I got home <laughs> I'm gonna start my bullet journal. So I haven't even taken the plastic off it yet. So I'm going to have a look again at the classes on Skillshare and just figure out how I'm gonna do my layouts and stuff, figure out how I'm going to track my reading, etc. So that should be fun. I also wanna see if I can, or I want to attempt the hand lettering. And also I need to like figure out what kind of theme I'm gonna have and stuff. That's another reason I haven't done a bullet journal yet is because I'm just so indecisive and just don't know what I wanna do. Um, I think I'll probably also look at some of the bullet journal kind of spreads just on YouTube in general, probably more so the ones from the booktubers because they do all the, all the, you know, book layouts and stuff. I'll probably do, you know, your stereotypical bookshelf thing that people like to do. And I don't know if I'll track the pages read every day or anything like that. Mine's probably going to be a lot more like simple to begin with than a lot you've probably seen before. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to attempt to start doing this and figuring out how I'm going to decorate it and all that stuff. I have plans. So that's what I'm going to do this evening. I'm going to play with my bullet journal and read. Uh, that's my wild and crazy Friday night. Uh, tomorrow though, I'm going to try and film some videos. I probably will only get one done, knowing me, but I'll try and aim for two. And then we're hanging out with some friends on Saturday night, tomorrow night. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go do some bullet journal stuff and I'm gonna put RuPaul on in the background whilst I do it. One, two, three, fuck it. Hey my dudes, it's Saturday. I wasn't going to give you an update because I've hardly read any more of this. <laughs> it's taken me so long. Also, my bullet journal stuff that I was doing last night may have taken me all night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Honestly, I kept planning it out and then changing it up every, every two minutes. Yeah, I'm real indecisive. That's probably why, you know, I got the wheel as well because I just couldn't decide what books I wanted to read. Anyway, I wasn't going to give you an update. I have just uh, filmed my wrap up. I know it's the 25th of May and I've only just now filmed my April wrap up. Why am I like this? I don't know. But the reason I'm giving you an update is because I just got a like surprise parcel, mystery package, if you will. And I have no idea who this could be from. I have a guess from the handwriting. I don't have a wish list anywhere like available for people to see. So it can't, like it has to be like a certain amount of people. Like there's only a few people that have my address. So this is a surprise. Let's see what it is. Okay, so y'all, 
It's Heidi by Joanna Spri Spirey? Spirey? Oh my god, I've been wanting this. I mentioned it in my um, bookshelf tour that this was the only Puffin in Bloom classic that I didn't have out of the four that they- this is beautiful. Oh my god, who, who got me? There's a card. Open me. Oh, it's- <laughs> I should have known. It's from Gavin. Gavin, you've got to stop. You've got to stop sending me stuff. This is too much. He sent me two books last week. Like, dude. It just says, keep smiling, beautiful. Love, Gav. I'm gonna cry. I'm actually gonna cry. Like, you did not need to, Gavin. Thank you so much. Oh my God. So many people have told me that they love this as well. Like, I have to read it as soon as possible. I love the end pages for these editions as well. Gavin! Oh, we, I was telling him not to. He told me he wanted me to do a, another, well, my TBR tour um, so that he knew what to, what to buy me next. And I told him I wasn't gonna do one for that specific reason so that he couldn't get me any more books, but he went ahead and did it anyway. Thank you so much. I do not deserve this, but you've definitely put a smile on my face. Thank you. Oh my god, the generosity of the people in this community, like my friends, is just, it's just unrivaled. Thank you, thank you. I've been wanting this for the longest time. Oh, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not, I'm not gonna cry. I'm fine, fine. Yeah. Okay, so that was a lovely surprise. Um, reading, reading. Okay, so I wasn't going to update you until I finished this bloody book, but I might as well tell you. I'm at page 208. It's taken me a while. I am a fast reader. Sorry, I'm still all emotional. Um, I'm a fast reader, but this has taken me a long time because there's so much. There's so much to learn. We're getting more and more information on the backstory of what everything that's happened, the relationships that he has with both Oryx and Crake. And every time I don't want to like rush over anything because I feel like a lot of this could allude to stuff that'll be relevant later on. So I'm enjoying it. It's still kind of rough in terms of the topics talked about, um, but it definitely has me on the edge of my seat and I'm just, I want to know what's going on. Like it's one of those books where I'm like, why aren't you telling me what's happened? Like, just just tell me, just tell me everything right now. I need to know. So as I mentioned last night, I was doing I was doing my bullet journal. It took me a while, because <laughs> I'm shit. But also, because I had on the new season of Nailed It on Netflix on in the background. So I might as well just show you what I've done. Okay, so the Skillshare classes I was looking at um, were really helpful in terms of what spreads I wanted to do. I also was watching, um, well, I was only watching two booktubers um, spreads, to be honest. I need to watch more. I was watching uh, Lala's, <laughs> Books and Lala's, um, ones that she did out, that she had out like last year. And I've mostly gone off what she did because she mostly detracted her reading in her bullet journal, which I think is what I'm gonna start with and then put more life stuff in it. I was also, of course, watching watching G's. Uh, she recently put out a video of how she's changed her bullet journal and the stuff she's tracking now. And it's like really extensive. So, so good. She has like a whole method. It's, it's, it's like pretty intimidating, but also very inspiring. Pretty much just her summed up in a nutshell there. Well, no, she's not intimidating, but she's inspiring. Anyway, I'll link her most recent um, bullet journal video in the description too, so if you want better, <laughs> better examples, basically, than this. So, okay, let me just preface this by saying that my May spread, I've only done my May spread, my May spread um, was a trial because obviously it's the like last week of May pretty much now, um, so I won't really be using it that much. But I started off with a um, monthly spread. Um, just ignore these decorations. I took the L and <laughs> did them like last and it was really late and I didn't put that much effort into it. In my future ones, I definitely will. So I've just done um, like a month at a glance. I haven't filled anything out yet. And then just a to-do list on this side. And then these purple bits are just like the days for bingo-a-thon. So in the future, if I do read-a-thons, that's the way I'm going to track that. I attempted some hand lettering from um, the hand lettering classes that I saw in Skillshare, but it, it does just take practice, I think. And then I did like a week. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with month or do weeks. Um, weeks will be pretty handy for me though, because I do like to have to-do lists every day, so I could put that on here. 
So we have, you know, the days of the week, um, Saturday and Sunday split up into two. Again, another like blossom twig thing that I did. Um, I tried to do this like, you know when people do that fancy lettering? Where, like it goes into the borders. I'm kind of okay at it, but not the best. So at the top we have videos and I've just got a column for filmed, edited and uploaded because your girl needs all the help she can get with staying organised when it comes to uploading, clearly. And then I have just a standard to-do list and then at the bottom I have a tracker. So I figured it's just got the days of the week down here. I might do some close-ups of this because I'm sure I'm not showing you very well. I'm just doing a brief overview. I'll do a better one for June. If you want to see me do a June one, and you know do it properly and I can do like a flip through let me know don't expect anything miraculous though um so yeah tracker one side I'm gonna do anxiety one side I'm gonna do depression just to see how I am every week and then I could maybe do one at the end of the month um putting everything in from each week and seeing if there's any like you know pattern with the bad days is there anything specifically that's making me bad on, on certain days I don't know also I took the L with this uh header and just <laughs> didn't bother even trying. Okay, also, this next page was good in theory, but the pens I got were kind of crap. Um, yeah, I should have just, you know, spent a bit more extra money and got some decent ones because these look atrocious. But anyway, I've only got one more page in this. On the, on this side I have books read, so I have title, genre and star rating. I was going to do date started and date finished, but Honestly, that doesn't really matter, does it? As long as I get that read in that month. Um, so that's that side. This side you can see I've done my wheel of TBR. Now you might be thinking, what? Well, it doesn't look like that one, like the colours are all off. Basically, every month I want to track the colours that are coming up to see if certain colours come up all the time and then I can keep an eye on all of the prompts that are coming up. So going clockwise, it's like the first prompt that came up was blue and then orange, then brown, etc. Um, also these pens go through the page, which isn't ideal. So in the future, I'll probably use um, just coloured pencil or maybe watercolours that don't leak through, um, just because I like the idea, but I hate how this looks. <laughs> and then at the bottom, I did one of those shelves. As you can see, I took inspiration from my own shelves. I did my little deer print. It looks a little more like a greyhound with antlers than an actual deer, but you get the idea. <laughs> I need to stop saying deer. Oh dear. Okay, and then um, for the actual books, I just colour them in the colours that they go to. So I've just got the prompts that came up around here, and then I figured instead of putting the books that related to that prompt, I would just colour them in the same colour. Um, so those are the books I've read already this month. Um, I could do like a full on, I know a lot of people do, I could double page spread with all the shelves. Um, but I've already read like over 50 books this month, this year already, so I would have to go back and fill all that in and I just couldn't be bothered. So, saying that though, I have left some space at the front. I've left a few pages um, just in case I think of something I want to do from the off. Um, but that's basically all I'm tracking. Also on this page I've got the colours for the books that they related to, which prompt. Um, I've got one extra, which is my best friend's exorcism, which wasn't on the wheel. Um, so yeah. That's what I did. It took me so long, so, so long, mostly because I kept messing up and starting again. Also, the pens I used, um, they kept like getting on my hands and then there'd be like little marks that were on the page and stuff. I don't think you could see that, but it really annoyed me. But anyway, that's all I did <laughs> last night and it took me hours. And then I think what I'm gonna do as well on this page, like I hate how that's come through, I might just use this page, is I'm going to track the books that I've received or that I've bought myself. So I'll have like brand new purchases, secondhand purchases, um, sent by a publisher. Like the only publisher that sends me stuff is Titan Books, um, although I don't actually request anything because I still find it cheeky. I probably should just get out of the habit of that and just go for it and just actually, you know, request new releases, but I, I just feel really cheeky. Anyway, and then I can have one for like gifted books that lovely people send me. And that's a way of just keeping track really of what what new books are going onto the TBR shelves. And also it'll help me keep track of when I added them as well, because sometimes when it comes to like TBR Vet, for example, so TBR Veteran, I'm like, okay, it's, has this been on here for a while? But if I start doing that, I'll be able to know, won't I? Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my little bullet journal so far. She's got a long way to go. She's gonna have a glow up 
don't you worry. Um, yeah, since since I did this last night, um, this morning I was looking at some spread examples online and just on YouTube and stuff and there's so much you can do. So I have some plans for my June spread which I will be using hopefully a lot more than I'll be using May obviously. Like I did the full month just to see what it looked like but really we're on this week aren't we? So, so yeah, that's what it's looking like so far. I messaged Gian and I was like, look what you made me do because she's also partly the reason why I wanted to do a bullet journal because I know she loves doing them and it, it helps her um, keep everything, you know, organised in her brain and your girl needs all the help she can get. So G was like, you should start a bullet journal. So this is also partly her fault. Um, so that's, that's it. That's what I've done so far. There's a lot more I could be tracking. There's a lot more, um, you know, it could look a lot better as well. But that's that. Uh, let me know what you track. Let me know what you um, do and if you have any ideas for me or anything. Also, let me know what equipment you use. Um, in terms of like coloured pens and stuff, what should I be getting? Um, because there's so much out there and if you have any rec recommendations for me, that'd be great. Um, so, that's my update for today. <laughs> this evening, like I said, I've just filmed a video so I'm going to be editing. Also hopefully seeing my friends later. I don't know if that's definitely happening or not though. And then tomorrow I'm hopefully going to spend the whole day reading because I've literally read the last 50 pages of my best friend's exorcism this week and 200 pages of this. That's, that's that. Like usually I read what, three to four books a week and this week it just hasn't happened. Like I haven't even had like that busy of a week so I don't know what's going on with me. I think it's just this one. It's taken me a while, but I really want to be done with it. Hopefully I'll finish it maybe tonight or tomorrow and then I can start on the Saviour's Champion because that's the one I'm like really eager to get to. And I know I mentioned I wanted to finish all these out soon so I could film my TBR, that's still the case. Um, so I need to get a wiggle on, don't I? So the next time you hear from me, hopefully I'll have bloody finished this. Hey y'all, the cat's doing the thing. It's Monday. I didn't update you yesterday, but I did get some reading done and then I ended up hanging out with my pals for a bit, went around to theirs, and then I came home and got a bit of a headache, so I didn't end up updating you, but I'm happy to say I finished this book and I started this one. So, Oryx and Crake was really weird. <laughs> like, to be in Margaret Atwood's head, honestly, she has the craziest ideas, but also, this could happen. This could totally happen. It's terrifying. She is one scary lady. So I pretty much read the whole second half of this yesterday and I liked it and I know I'm going to be thinking about it for a while. Um, I didn't love it as much as I thought. I definitely thought this would be a five star for me. I think I'm going with a four. Just because I found some parts when the snowman... Cat, you're being so noisy. He's now behind the TV. Honestly, he can stay behind there as long as he's silent. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, the parts where we're in Snowman's head, a lot of the future, because almost like two timelines, there's the past and then there's the present. The present I found to be a little bit slow. For example, there's parts where he is just plodding along doing his day-to-day -day thing, foraging, and I didn't really care so much about that. I was more just getting through those parts where I could find out more about what actually happened because there's so much mystery in this. So the past tense was a lot better, even though that's where we get all these like traumatizing scenes almost. Like a lot of this was really, really rough. However, I thought it was really well done. We start off not knowing anything by the end. It's very satisfying because we do know more and he's been noisy again, Tiberius. It was really well done though at the beginning. You're just full of confusion pretty much until the last, I'd say 70 pages, you're pretty much full of confusion. But it ended out being really well done, really clever. And I found it to be so interesting, like the ideas behind how the world kind of fell. And we have some more intrigue because I don't think I've mentioned this is the first in a series. I do have the second book, I have Year of the Flood and I've heard that one is a lot more, well, a lot better and it'll make you, once you've read it, it'll make you want to go ahead and reread this to find the stuff that you missed. So I'll definitely continue at some point. As dystopians go, I thought this was really, really good in the sense that it is terrifying <laughs> and that's what I want from a dystopian. Oh, there he is. Hi, you coming to join me? Come on then. <laughs> And now he's going to stand there. Come on, come on my knee. Nope. Thanks. Just move the camera. There we go. Also, this was a touch pretentious in parts. I think that's our characters being pretentious though. So you do kind of need a thesaurus a lot of the time going through this. There's words that I used and I'm like, okay, I've never seen that written or heard that spoken in my life. But it was really interesting. I like the splicing 
of animals and all the um, genetic engineering in here. Like I said, Margaret Atwood is a scary lady and this could totally be our future, the way the world is looking. So yeah, I gave this four stars. I will continue in the series. I would recommend, but also I would say it's not for everybody because of the harsher topics, the more graphic stuff included in this. I'm glad I read it, but it took me bloody ages. <laughs> but guys, okay. So I picked up The Sapiens Champion, 100 pages in. This is amazing. I love it. I love it so much already. This is just so much fun. This is just so much fun. I've already given you like, the bare bones of this but basically we have a competition to win the hand of the savior so there's all these men and obviously not a lot of them are going to survive and that's the way to decide who is going to be the next sovereign who is going to rule beside the savior who is not just magical the only one with magic the savior of these lands she's also queen or will be queen at the beginning of this we're introduced to our main character tobias his twin sister is paralyzed from the waist down so she's in a lot of pain he is a laborer he basically works day in day out to try and provide for his family his mother and his sister as their dad passed away unfortunately quite recently I think and we're introduced to his best friend Milo who wants to go ahead and compete in this tournament because not only do you get the opportunity to perhaps marry the savior who's supposed to be you know really really beautiful anyway you also get prize money well you get money just for entering and he's trying to convince Tobias to go ahead and do the same thing for his sister so they can provide for his family. But he's like, no, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Obviously, at the last minute, he decides to do it. Otherwise, this wouldn't be much of a book, would it? <laughs> so as you'd expect, not too much into this. He's part of this tournament. Um, there's like, I want to say 20 men. Um, there's five in each category. There's like four categories of men. So I like the way that they've done that. There's the savants, there's the beasts, there's the kind of lords. Each one has like a nickname, um, a sigil to go by. His is the artist because he used to be an artist. He was an apprentice, well, he had an apprenticeship before he had to go and provide for his family. And the first part of this tournament is called the labyrinth. And we have all these men put in these tunnels. They have to obey the rules of the savior. So there's text sometimes on the floor saying what they have to do. And there's all these kind of obstacles, I wanna say. So it's kind of like Indiana Jones meets the gladiator because we have all these men and they're like in armor, they have sigils and stuff. So it's very gladio gladiator-esque. <laughs> But then we'll have like the stereotypical like traps, booby traps in these tunnels. These men have to work out how to get through them. Also there's some deaths as you'd expect. <laughs> so we have some characters that we're rooting for and then we have some characters who are just nasty, awful people. This is adult, it's really gritty, it's brutal. We've had some deaths already. And I do wanna say, I have my theories and if they're right, this is predictable. So hopefully they're not right when it comes to the savior herself. But there's some humor in this as well. There's some like silly humor from like the first chapter. I was giggling at this. This is everything I wanted. Bobby, you knew, you knew when you got me this, that you knew I'd love this. She did say it's kind of like the gladiator meets Indiana Jones and I was just sold from that. Also, she did mention that there's not much world building in that. Yeah, there's not much world building at the beginning of, beginning of this. I'm sure we'll get more, but this is the beginning of a series. So that will, that will develop over time. Um, I'm not too bothered about that. This is so much fun. <laughs> if you're a lover of fantasy, like this is this is a ride already. I don't know if the whole book's gonna be set with them in these tunnels. The first hundred pages have been and it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon, but it's so much fun. Boogaby traps and humor and characters that I'm rooting for. I, I, I love it, I love it already. Like I wanna read this so much. Like I wanna read this right now. If I didn't have to vlog right now, I would be reading this. So I'm a hundred pages in, but I'm gonna predict that this could be a five star y'all. This could be a five star, but that's basically all I read this week. <laughs> so unfortunately I didn't get to start High Fidelity. Still wanna read it. I have some time before the end of the month, so I'm sure it'll get done. But to wrap up this week, I finished out My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This was an easy five star for me. This was just a lot of fun as well. And I only had the last 50 pages of this one though to read. So I read that. And then as I just told you, I read Oryx and Crate by Margaret Atwood. This pretty much took up my whole week. <laughs> And I'm 100 pages into this bad boy. So not my best reading week. Um, like last week, I wasn't doing very well mental health wise. And I read a lot, which tends to be a habit of mine. You know, when I'm not doing so well, I will just throw myself into a fictional world <laughs> to avoid my real life problems, you know. Whereas this week, I've actually been doing a lot better. You've probably been able to tell um, my anxiety, depression's not been that bad at all this week. So I haven't read that much. <laughs> That's like the only downside. But I had a good week mood-wise, not so much in reading, but I still read some good stuff. We have a 
five star, we have a four star, and this is probably gonna be at least a four star. So I'll leave this vlog off here because I've already edited most of it and it's already like at 30 something minutes so I'm really sorry for the long vlog. I know some of you like them but I didn't read that much so how I managed to talk this much and it still be this long, I don't know. <laughs> also I'm not sure if I'll have a vlog up next week guys. I'll do my best <laughs> but I'm going to Italy. Did I mention I'm going to Italy? I don't think I mentioned, did I? <laughs> But yeah, I'm going on the 2nd, so that's Sunday, and usually, like, you know, I like to get these vlogs out on maybe, like, a Tuesday. I aim for Tuesday, it's not always a Tuesday, but I aim for Tuesday. So, it won't be a full week if I do manage it, also, it's going to be really busy. I'll do my best to vlog and get that out, um, but it, like I said, it won't be a full week. Um, I only have a couple of books left to read from the wheel anyway, just these two, so I could possibly read something else that's not on the wheel, maybe? I don't know, depends if I get these done pretty quick. But if for some reason I don't have a vlog out next week for you, I will make sure to give you, well, I'll make sure to update Goodreads with my thoughts on these. I only usually leave a star rating and don't leave my thoughts, but I'll try and leave my thoughts if I don't get a vlog up. So you can follow me on Goodreads. The link will be in the description for my Goodreads. And I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog, you guys. Uh, do let me know if you've read these books and your thoughts on them as always. I hope you're doing well too. Thank you again as well for your lovely comments on last week's vlog when I wasn't doing so well. You're, you're the best. I love you the most. And I'll catch you in my next one, my dudes. Bye. Put your hand